We've been drawing gradient curves. So given our function, a, a graph of a function, we've been drawing the gradient of that, which is really good that we're starting to get the idea of what happens when we look at a curve to its gradient. So we understand whether the curve's rising or falling or it's stationary and so the gradient's zero. But what we want to be able to do is first principles. So what are we talking about? So imagine a piece of curve. So we've got our function y is equal to the function of x. So and what we want to do is we draw a secant. Now we know a secant is a line that goes from one point on the curve to another. And what we want to do is estimate the gradient of this curve between these two points. And we do this by doing getting the rise over the run. Now if this is the point x, then the y coordinate we could write as the function of x using our function notation. And if we go across a certain distance, which is our run, so the difference between x plus h and x would be h because we're adding h to it. So that would be the difference there. When we get that point x plus h, we go up and we get some function of x plus h. So we're subbing x into the function, we're subbing x plus some number into the function as well. And we get our gradient from that as the derivative, as the this difference, the function of x plus h minus the function of x, so that value for there minus that one, minus over this one minus this one, which is just going to give us h, because we said x, minus, x plus h minus x would give us just h. So there's our gradient of our secant, which is what we call the rise over, from the rise over the run. Difference in the y values over the difference in the x values. We just haven't written them in terms of the y values, but we've written them in terms of our function notation. So that's where we start to see the idea of how the gradient changes over time. Now, if we start to make that value of h, that difference in our x values, smaller, so we start to get the, the points where p and q uh, cross be closer and closer there. So the idea there is what we're trying to do is get a limit. Now, a limit is where we take a value, a variable and start to send it towards a particular value. In this case, we want to look at what happens to this function as h approaches zero. Now, as we're looking at this, h can't approach zero. So we can't approach zero, but what we want to do with a limit function when we do that is substitute zero in. But we can't substitute zero in here at the moment because we're going to get a, derivative, a divide by zero error. So we just can't throw zero in straight away. We want to be able to do some calculations and get rid of the h, and we'll do that in a moment. So what starts to happen? So what our secant starts to become shorter and shorter as we, as we look there until we get down to really small ones. And if, if it starts to approach zero, we basically won't be able to tell the difference. Now, if you look at our curve here, and if you look carefully at the, how it's been drawn, uh, the computer, when it's drawn functions like this, has trouble trying to get a nice smooth curve. And that's really the case. If you zoom in on any curve, and if you want to try and do this on, on some sort of program, go on the internet and get, a, get onto a program, draw, see a curve drawn. If you can go in and zoom right in on it, so we're talking, so the difference in the values of x there being like very small fractions, like one one hundredth, one one thousandth, one one millionth that small, so as the, diff as the differences between your x values approach zero, the curve actually starts to look like a straight line. So it lo it it'll look straight, it won't look curved. You're, you're zooming in so far on that curve that it would look, at, look like in a straight line there. And that's what we start to get the idea is that if we get h being approaching zero, so the secant becomes so small that it looks like that basically it's just touching that point P, that would be like it, that would be called a tangent. A tangent we know is a curve that touches a, a line that touches a curve at one point only. And remember, a point has no thickness. A point is just a, 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 a place in space. So it has no thickness. So it's only one, it's infinitesimal. So if we get that value of h being there so we get an idea that it's infinitesimal it's going to basically be a tangent 
And what that will allow us to do, if that's a tangent there, then the curve, because it is looks so flat at that point, will have the same gradient as the tangent to the curve at that point. And that's where we get the idea of the gradient of the function. And this is where we call gradient from first principles. Because what we're doing is looking at the idea of we get a limit as the h gets smaller, so the run gets smaller, what happens to the change in the y values? So we're looking at what's the steepness of the curve when we've basically got no run on that function. So we still have a little bit of a run because we can't ever have it being h because we can't have it ever being zero. But what's the curve starting to look like? And that would be the change, infinitesimal change in our y values there. So we call it the limiting position of the secant, which is a tangent because the, the, tan the secant becomes so small and becomes... It's cutting, it looks like it's cutting the curve only at one point, that it looks like a tangent to the curve. So that's what we call first deriving by first principles. So and that's the function formula we use. We use this notation, f dash of x. So f of x is our function. So we have that as our function. f dash of x would be our first derivative. So our derivative notation. That's one of the derivative notations we use. And that's what we call the derivative. That's what, where we use the, why we use the term derivative. And where we use the term derivative was it gives us the gradient of the curve at any point. Now, given the function there, we saw when we graphed it the other day that we could have a function and gra graph its derivative. But what would be its actual derivative? What's its actual function? We get a new function. And find a derivative of the function, we can use this notation. So we did some work with this function when we did some work in basic arithmetic and algebra. So the idea is here to get to a point where I can eliminate the h on the bottom so I can start to substitute h in. So we apply this formula here. So the function of x plus h, if the function of x is defined as x squared minus 6, I'm going to take the x plus h and put it into the x squared. And I'm going to have minus 6. And then I'm going to subtract the function of x, which is this function here, x squared minus 6, because we put the x in for it, over h. We expand our brackets. So that expands to x squared plus 2h, xh plus h squared. We've got our minus 6. We minus x squared, and minus times minus, minus, times minus gives us a positive 6. So we start to be able to cancel some terms out. The x squareds cancel leaves us with this 2xh on h squared, plus h squared, all on h. Now, notice our terms where we didn't have x in all and h in all of them before. We do now. So we can factorize h out, and then that will cancel. And that's where we start to get our idea that our, we can start to put a limit in. Because what we're looking at is, as h approaches 0, what does this function do? Well, if h approaches 0, that becomes so small that it basically becomes zero. And our function would just become two lots of x, and that would be our gradient function. So there's the derivative of x squared minus six. It's two x. That's how we go through first principles. Now, we don't really need to go through that all the time. In our next video, we'll show you how to do that in a much easier way um, to, get to get from this function to this function without having to go through all the first principles. We've got much easier formulas to deal with. But the but what we want you to take away from this video is what's the idea of the derivative of the function? It's getting the gradient at a point. And this function here will have gradients at all the points on this function given to us by this fo formula here, 2x. That describes all the gradients for the function x squared minus 6 for every value of x. And that's really what we're wanting to look at. This is what the derivative does. It gives us the gradient of the, of the curve at every single point on that curve.